Rocks in the Glass podcast. Did you oh, guys bah, miss bah. us? Bah, 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 bah. We missed y'all. So this is a weekly podcast where we share our unfiltered thoughts and opinions on a variety of topics. We missed a couple of weeks because we went on a little break, but we back. So sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and join us on a plethora of topics, magical fun, all of the things, and we back in this beach. Period. Bum, 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 bum. Did y'all miss us for real? I, 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 I definitely. You missed, like, you missed yeah. us. Ah, we missed that call. I missed the community. <laughs> What's up, community? So every week we do a drink of the night. Kendra, what's the drink tonight? So everybody's probably talked about it. Um, I haven't seen too many people in the DMV really, really like do a review, do a review or, something like that. or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. But um, while we were in Florida for our cruise, which I'll talk about later, we picked up two different types of alcohol. So one of them... For my birthday, we went to, I can't remember the restaurant, but it was like a seafood-esque restaurant with like a, um, like a, um, Louisiana spin. Okay, like Cajun seafood. Like a Cajun seafood Mm -hmm. situation. And so they had a, um, whatever, I can't remember the drink that he had because it was one of their like specialty drinks, Mm -hmm. but it had a tequila in it. And the tequila that they had was like, so it was so good. It was something, mm-hmm. it was really, really good. So he's like, where do you get this tequila? So he, where did you guys get this tequila? Like, what's the name of it? So he told us the brand. When I looked it up, it was nowhere to be found. Oh, wow. The only place that they had it was in Fort Lauderdale. Mm. So we went, my birthday was in, of course, August. So I was like, so we just have to remember, because we stayed overnight in Fort Lauderdale, that when we go to Florida to find us a total wine and go pick it up. So... We went ahead and did that, and maybe that'll be one of the other taste testers that we do. Um, but while we were there, because we could not find it here, we picked up the da 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 Sir Davis. Davis, and we know who is a <laughs> fan stand. So I wanted to take a time, take an opportunity for us to be able to try it. Mm-hmm. It has not gotten; it's just. Straight out, not straight out of the packaging, not cold, nothing. We're gonna try it, just a little, nope, just to see how we like it. But a lot of people said that they like it over either frozen, not frozen, but from the freezer Chilled. or mm-hmm. over ice. Mm-hmm. So we'll finish it off with that. But our drink of the night is going to be Sir Davis. So when you have whiskey, so is that like whiskey straight up? Yes. Since it's not on the rocks. Correct. Okay. Yep. So you want whiskey neat? Oh, neat, neat. Yes. Yes. It's a whiskey neat. So that's the drink of the night. So whiskey, whiskey neat, dead on the rocks. Okay. Okay. So let's crack it open. So we have been gone. Yeah. We have been having a time between birthdays, vacations, school starting. Now we in the fall. Mm-hmm. First and foremost. Okay, so what did, what happened first? Me going on vacation. Yes. Well, first, let me let me do a right. Well, no, me going on vac- vacation because y'all was around. I talked about my damn lights being out. We talked yeah, about that yeah, when I was in when I was in Mass and Nine. So that was the last thing, right? So I ain't had no car, I ain't had no lights. So that too, <laughs> right? Like right. even though we were, it was I was celebrating my birthday. You were on vacation, but then you didn't even have a car. I ain't had no car, I ain't had no lights on vacation. So we leave for vacation. That was a whole cluster, Um, but we ended up taking, so we left out of Miami, and we did the um, Carnival Magic, which went to Amber Cove, Dominican Republic, Turks and Caicos, um, Grand Turks, and then we went to their private island, Half Moon K, Mm -hmm. Half Moon Key, whatever. So when I say we had a ball, we got there, so we what we ended up doing, we went to Miami a, a day early, stayed overnight in Miami, did some stuff with the kids, ran some errands, like just to have like snacks for the f- cruise and stuff like that, stuff that we didn't want to bring from the plane. Mm-hmm. Um, got like uh, sunscreen, stuff that we knew we were going to probably be finished with mm-hmm. for the, you know, mm-hmm. because of how much sunscreen we was going to have to use. Um, so stayed overnight. Then we left that Sunday, uh, cruise that first day, and I'm going to tell you something. I, now... 
depending on who you are, we are drinkers. Mm -hmm. The drink package comes in handy, baby. The drink package comes in big handy. You hear me? When I say, this is the only thing. You have to figure out what bars are not doing stuff at certain times. Mm. So, like, in a, in a, during the morning time, it's no point of even trying to do a bars on the Lido deck because everybody is out there. Is out there. Yeah. Your best bet is to go to the bars that really don't have anything going, going on. on. So, mm -hmm. going to, like, the Alchemy Bar or the bar, like, sometimes the bar right where the, um, like, the front desk and stuff is. But just going to, like, the off the... Going to the bars at the casino mm -hmm. because it's not going to be a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I got to remember that. Yeah. And then, um, so I had the day of see the, the Amber Cole, Depp's Kiss. Jonathan, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, Jonathan done found somebody to pay for him to go on the zip line. Pay the 28. <laughs> I just, I'm looking up and all of a sudden I hear somebody say, wee! And I was like, that sound like my child, but I know I ain't pay it. He, he, and they like, that ain't Jonathan. He, he come like, ma, that was great. And I'm like, how you get up there? Um, they had the slides. They had the swim up bar. And then, you know, of course, with on a cruise, because Joshua was not potty trained or fully potty trained, he wasn't able to like do the water stuff. So we were able to have him in the water because they can't do the swimmers on the uh, cruise. So we had him in the water. We were able to do the, you know, still just kind of still do the activities without feeling like somebody got to sit with him or only be with him at the kid area or whatever. So that was great. Um, Grand Turk, we did the beach. I wish, honestly, well, two things. That if they had like a harder like sand or whatever, I was like, I wish that we had just, done um excuse me the uh margaritaville mm -hmm. where they had the pool and stuff mm -hmm. because that was like that sand gets everywhere and it's mm -hmm. so difficult to get it out get it out it's just yeah. I, I hate that type of sand um but then on the flip side i'm glad that we did because the next day at in the bahamas we got rained out so oh, we wow. were there for only like two hours and then it was just pouring down rain so, and then we still had, I think we went out, we got off the boat at like 12. We weren't leaving until, no, I'm sorry. We got out. Yeah. We got off the boat at like 12, 31 o'clock. We weren't leaving until five. Mm -hmm. We had to get back on the boat. Like when I say crazy rain and then you have to taxi over. So it's not like, like just getting back on the boat from the, from the pier. You have to get on the, like a water taxi mm -hmm. and get on. Mm -hmm. So that was a mess, but overall, wonderful time. When I tell you, I got all my steps in. I had to up my little, uh, my, uh, yeah, like your daily. My, yeah, yeah, cause I, yeah. I, when I say walking, that's one thing I like about a cruise and being, sometimes being on vacation, I do more walking and doing Absolutely. stuff, standing up yeah. and things like that. So I had a great time. Um, the kids had a ball. Jayla was at the burger place all day long. Guys. Yes. Yeah. I got to get a burger. She said, <laughs> right now she's like, oh, I can't wait for our next food. I got to get that burger. I said, Jayla, the burger is just a burger. Yeah. But I guess it's a shit burger. It's a, it's a difference. But anyway, so I had a great time. So again, left, um, got back that Saturday, did some running around with the kids, took the kids to the beach. So they were able to kind of, because the girls wanted to do a TikTok on the sand. So we did that and, you know, came on home. Luckily, before we left, that Friday, before we left, my lights came back on. Oh, good. But then realizing that when the tree came down, it also broke my Comcast cord. Oh. So I didn't have internet. Mm. And I was like, thank God I have good neighbors that would watch out for the house. But I'm like, because none of my cameras was going to be working. Wow. And you didn't even realize it. Right. Until I was like, what is going on? And then when they came out, when we so we got back that Sunday, that Tuesday they came out, and I saw the second string. I was like, oh, it's just because there wasn't no wire. So I should have just called them simultaneously and had them at least plug that back up. So by the time the lights came back on or whatever. So after that, so I was home for what? Maybe a week or so. And I could not function without having a vehicle. We were really going to wait until the middle of October. And I was like, I can't go to the grocery store when I want to. And it's not like I rip and run all the time, but I just can't move if I need to move. Like, it's always like we're working around each other's schedule. And because he cuts hair and he's like, I'm going to cut on Saturday and Sunday. We just got back because he's been, been off for a week. And I'm like, what if I want to go to my mama's house and, and kick it and kiki? 
And then um, I know when I was cleaning up, he was doing something. So he, I had the car. And so I had to go see my grandmother because she needed something done. So it just wasn't, we weren't able to move the way we needed to move. So yeah. bought me a car. We're going to say Citroen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just a rambling. So, cheers to me buying a car. Hello? Come on now. Cheers to that. It's, you know what? This is a, uh, this is a good drink. It has, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's a little rambunctious, right? But you could taste notes of different things. Like it doesn't just taste like You ever watch Mulan? Yes. Well, <laughs> I'ma make a man out of you. This is good. You got the strength of the raging tiger. It's I mean you definitely It has a very aromatic You definitely taste I'll say two things. It it I, it burns going. It, uh -huh. it burns. It, it heats up your mouth. Okay? That's one thing. But it doesn't have that, like, alcohol kind of, like, yes burn. Like, like I feel the heat right here in my chest, and I feel it in my mouth. Uh -huh. But I don't feel that. Like, you know how you take a shot of Patron, uh -huh. and it's like, it feels like it burns your throat? Uh -huh. It doesn't feel like that. It's a smooth drink. It's a smooth drink, but it's definitely like it's a it's a drink. It is a drink. It ain't playing. It is a drink. So let's see. Let me. I'm gonna do some reading on it. Okay. So Sir Davis is an American whiskey launched in 2024. Of course, it is a joint venture between Moet Hennessy and Beyonce Knowles Carter, and the name of Carter's great grandfather Davis Hugh. And her son's name. I think people keep forgetting that her son is Sir. Right, but I think the, so it's named after the grandfather and maybe her son. I, I just, I, I mean, nobody has been saying that, but her son is named Sir, S-I-R. Mm -hmm. So, I don't so know. So maybe it's a, after both. Yeah. Um, a ro a prohibition, prohibitionaire, moonshine and farm, oh, okay, so he was a moonshiner and a farmer in the American South. The whiskey has a distinctive character with notes of tangy Seville orange, sun-kissed raisins, dry red fruits, and a warm bake and warm baking spices. Mm -hmm. I so get that. I can I can definitely get the spices. I get that. I get um, that. Oh, this will be. Mm, let me let me continue. It is made from a combination of rye and malt, uh, malted barley, aged in American. American white oak and finishes with cherry cast from extra for, for excuse me, extra depth and complexity. Mm -hmm. So, and I can, I can see that. I can taste that. I, I like the, um, spices mm -hmm. for me, a lot of bourbons and whiskeys that oak flavor really comes through. And mm -hmm. I don't like that. I don't like that woody, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, or that smoky flavor. Mm -hmm. This one, Definitely, the spices come through. Yeah, and so and it just in like you smell on, and you smell. I smell something too. I smell a little bit of probably either cherry or something. There's something that that when they were talking about fruit, it is. So it's the dark fruit. So you're going to get your um, like a plum, or your plums, something. your There's cherries, that you your smell. your yeah. deep, mm -hmm. you know, your deep red. Definitely your plums, um, deep red fruit. So it's tasty. I've heard it's like we're gonna have we're gonna add some ice to it, but it's a and it's, it it doesn't like right now. I haven't had it for a minute. You could and you could taste it. You could taste the difference, mm -hmm. the um, different attributes that they've added to it. Yeah, to give it a very smooth. Like this is a this is a sipper. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a. All you need is a nice cube, and you could sip on this for a minute. I probably would have to add a little uh, Coke or something because okay. I just yeah you, you need know a, you need that yeah no this for, for me and that's not a lot of drinks that I could do like that but this one I could just do with ice and maybe a splash of just a sweeten just just a little bit a little bit of simple syrup yeah and I'm I'm cool only drink I could drink with just ice is probably like um like a honey bourbon 
Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. Jack Daniels honey or something like that. Yeah, this would be good with, like, if you do it, did a hot toddy, but more alcohol than toddy. Yeah. I could I could definitely make a hot toddy with this. One more. Yeah, just a little bit. Thank you. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so that's our review on Sir Davis. If you can find it, get it. A lot of people have been ordering it. Um, and if you find yourself in Florida. Yeah, it tastes a little bit better with the ice. I think mm-hmm. what the ice does is the, the little bit of water from the ice. It opens it up. Opens it up. Yep. Yeah. And that <clears throat> definitely will happen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so that was, okay, you were saying you couldn't survive without a car. So yes, yeah, so I want to end up getting a car. I got me a 2022 Suburban. Big Suburban, not the little one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then that was, that was it. I got a new, new co-worker, so I've been training her. I trained her right before we left. Um, you said a lady gone, it was getting on your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> gone baby one day we gonna have to get into the tea about that girl <laughs> we're gonna have to get into the tea about it so yeah so that's that's basically everything that's been going on with me so what what have i been doing it's it's been it's libra season big libra season um and the libra's been libra like all the, all the way around Good and bad. Um, so what did I do? I went to see. We talked about um, Maxwell Jasmine mm-hmm, Sullivan. Mm-hmm. It was a great concert. Mm-hmm. I had a really good time. Uh, you had a ball. You had a time. I had a ball. I had a blast. So that was super fun. Um, what did I do next? Oh, you know what I did? Me and my best friend, we did the um, uh, the trolley um historic. Uh, mm, tour around mm. DC because oh, I was saying I was telling her one I haven't gone to like any of the like monuments or, yeah, or yeah, yeah. since like elementary school yeah and when people come to the area that's not from the area I'm always like yeah you should go but like I'm gonna go to work y'all go to that you know yeah, what I'm saying or, like yeah. if it's a Saturday like I'll meet you for brunch like I, I just yeah I'd be over it yeah but I was like let me go because I haven't been in a while mm-hmm. I mean, when I say I haven't been I I had never seen like the Martin Luther King oh, thing that they had yeah. did like several years ago. Yeah. yeah, I just don't be going down there. Yeah. Like I'll go to the um, African American History Museum. Mm-hmm. So I've been to that twice. Mm-hmm. And if we're like going to a specific place, yeah. So if you were like, hey, let's go to the Smithsonian. Like I'll just go to that specific place. But I'm not like walking around the mall. Yeah. Or, Going to the White House, yeah. like I don't be doing that. Yeah. So I was like, "Well, let me do it." And then we did. They it was called the Monuments at Night. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. I think with it being at night, it was not a whole lot of commotion going on, yes. and you were able to actually see yes. stuff. Yes. Granted, it did get dark, and a lot of like the concessions and the convenience stores and all of that were closed. Mm-hmm. But I didn't mind that because I was like, I'm not about to be right. buying yeah. nothing yeah, from yeah, y'all yeah. anyway. Yeah. So. I know my friend did. She was like, it would have been nice, like, to have a couple little food trucks because she was like, I was kind of wanting, like, a hot dog or mm-hmm. something by the end of mm-hmm. it. But I was like, yeah, that, that ain't making me no one. Never mind. Um, so that was fun. I really enjoyed that. Uh, what else did I do? We went to brunch. So I had a brunch with all my girlfriends at Lamani. 10 out of 10 recommend. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, I feel like everybody does this, but like you see these restaurants and then you like save them mm-hmm. to like your Instagram or mm-hmm, TikTok. Mm-hmm. So Lamani was one of the ones that I had seen and I had saved. Mm-hmm. So when everybody was like, what do you want to do for your birthday? I'm like, I don't really know. I just went and was like, well, what, what are some restaurants that mm-hmm, I had mm-hmm. saved? And when I saw that, I was like, okay, well, let me call them, mm-hmm. see if I can make a reservation and yeah. we can just do brunch there. So we did. Um, I had a really good time. Fun. Like, really good time. Brunch was so nice. Everybody was asking for you. Like, Where's Kendra? <laughs> I was like, that whole vacation. <laughs> she took, she on a cruise. She fine. <laughs> she got somewhere having a time. Yeah, she's somewhere having a time. She good. <clears throat> um, 
So yeah, brunch was cute, and then we did a uh, happy hour. Happy hour that was super fun. Yeah, that was fun. We definitely have to do it again. Enjoyed myself. Um, but I and and I, you know, lesson learned. On Sunday when I was down at the wharf for Lamani, we parked. I can't remember how much we paid, but let's just say it was like thirty dollars. And I do get it that there's different prices on the weekends. Going down to the wharf on a weekday. And paying for that garage parking. Trash. I was pissed that we paid damn near $60 to park. Like, what? So, I said, okay, fool me once. <laughs> shame on me. Yeah, well, oh, fool- shame on you. Because I'm Ubering. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? That's I'm like, crazy. I told you, we should just park in my house and just Uber down. But you would think, I mean, I, and I guess not, because they want to make their money. But you would think. After a certain point, it's just a fl- like to me. After we get back, because then I'm like, also we could have valeted for that price. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, after we hit about forty dollars, right, right, right. Why would you keep the meter running? Like that's so stupid to me. So anyway, like I, I maybe y'all already knew. I don't be traveling down to DC like that. And we that. don't really do it on the weekdays like that. And either. we don't really do it on a weekday. It's usually like a Friday, or if we do it on a weekend, you'll come to my house and right. we'll just Uber. Yeah. Um. Or there, there's like weekend rates, right? Because yes. a lot of times on Saturdays and Sundays you can park on the street for free or yes. whatever. So, yes. but I'm like lesson learned. I'll never do that again. Um. But I really enjoyed that. The place Happy was hour. cute. It was super cute. Oh, the drinks were. They were nice. Let me say, ten out of ten, always recommend. What's the name of that place? Taco. T- ta- t- tiki. Tiki TNT. Tiki TNT. Tiki TNT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a little. I was interested. I wanted to go there because I heard they had a nice little like rooftop area. Mm-hmm. We actually sat on the inside because the day we went, it was a little overcast, mm-hmm. so it really wasn't like the ideal um, environment to be outside. So. We didn't go outside, but I would love to go back there mm-hmm. and like sit out on their like rooftop. So we did that. Um, and then what else did I end up doing? Oh, I, I went to brunch. My husband took, I went out to eat with him. We went to um, Founded Farmers. Okay. Um, so it was him, my stepdaughter, my brother. We went to Founded Farmers. Mm-hmm. Had a really good time. Fun. I had to tell y'all a, a funny and it maybe it's funny to me. It might not be funny to y'all. I, I sometimes I feel like I have a hard time retelling stories, but here we go. Mm-hmm. So we're there and we're eating. My brother, he's ten years younger than me, right? So I mean that that doesn't really mean anything, but I just always kind of view him as like my young, my little brother. Mm-hmm. So we're out, we're eating or whatever, and um, he is kind of into like. I mean, he likes nice restaurants, but he's mm-hmm. kind of more so into like, like the the um, greasy spoons. So like diners, okay. yes. you know, he want like um, Janae. He wants a burger with mm-hmm. fries, you know, whatever like that. Mm-hmm. But we at Founded Farmers, so right. like you get in like farm to table type food, right? Exactly. So he orders the uh, the fried seafood platter, and it comes out right. Okay, and. He's eating his food, and he got this kind of look on his face. And I'm like, what's wrong? You're not enjoying your food? And he was like, um, it's okay. So I was like, well, let me taste. Can I taste a piece of your fish? So I taste a piece of the fish. And I'm like, mm, this this fish don't taste good. I said, they must have fried it in old grease. My brother said, oh, thank God. I said, what? <laughs> what was the problem? He said, I thought it was just me. With my cheap palate, not used to eating high end food. <laughs> so, so, I was just sitting there trying to act like maybe this would it taste right, like right. a little bit of money, a little, a little coin, <laughs> a little dollar. It's a maybe little bit more. <laughs> he said maybe my palate wasn't refined. <laughs> right. He said, but when you said it ain't taste right, I said, ooh, <laughs> it ain't me, baby. It ain't me. I, I my, my, my tongue ain't it ain't it ain't in the ghetto. Okay. I'm cooked. I thought that was hilarious. I say no. It tastes like if it cooked in old grease. Um. So anyway, he. I asked him if he wanted to send it back. He said no. So he did. He didn't send it back. But I thought that was so funny. I said, so you was just gonna sit there. Gonna be like, I and, guess this and, what money and, tastes like. <laughs> He said, he said, you know, like when people eat like escargot for the right. first time. He right. was like, that's what I thought I was saying. That's what I was thinking, like caviar and stuff. Right. Like. Granted, it's 
founded farmer. So it's not like, you know, super yeah. elite yeah. Yeah. dining, yeah, 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 yeah. but I, I could understand where he coming yeah, from. Like, like, I was just at Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where, where the dollar drinks at? Right. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I get it. So we did that. We had a good time. And then other than that, honestly, I've just been busy. It's, and, and also, too, there's a lot of people um, around me whose birthdays are around this time. Mm-hmm. So I feel like every weekend since my birthday, I've been celebrating someone's Somebody else's birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, man, people been outside. So I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that um, Kamala Harris is a Libra. I guess her birthday mm-hmm. is coming up soon mm-hmm. or has recently passed. Mm-hmm. I don't know when it is. But I was thinking about that because when Cardi B was going off on her rant, Girl, and everybody was like, <laughs> "Big Cardi!" Everybody was like, "Uh, like you know, it's it's Libra season there. Like she's showing off, right?" Um, and then I don't know if y'all are watching Love Is Blind. I'm not really watching it. I watch when I went to the hairdresser and I was she was she had it on, mm-hmm. and so <clears throat> I was watching it. Because she had it on. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I've seen, like, I think while I was there, I was able to watch, we watched, like, two episodes. So I watched those two episodes, and then I've been getting updates mm-hmm. from Instagram and yeah, TikTok, TikTok about mm-hmm. what's going on. But I guess the guy that has the three kids, oh, I got to look it up. What is his name? So I don't be watching it. I don't either. But I feel like everybody is into it or maybe it's just my algorithm that's what they showing me but it is feeling like everybody's into that i don't know why they were a video made me so far oh my birthday cake is on saturday tyler so the guy tyler apparently he has three kids girl it's a mess and i'll just say this we don't have to get in, into it for real because i'm not even really watching it for real mm-hmm. but from what i did see so I watched when they were two episodes towards the end of them being in the pod. So mm-hmm. right before they got engaged, I didn't see Mexico. I've only seen clips of what people have posted on social media. But my mindset watching it and going in, right, was first of all, when it comes to these online dating shows, not everyone, but for the most part, when we look at like, just dating in general, men don't typically need, they don't need that. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot more women out here than men, right? Mm-hmm. So if a man is halfway decent mm-hmm. and he wants to be in a relationship, there's a plethora, a plethora of, women. of women that he mm-hmm. can choose from. He don't have to go on a reality dating show. Right. So my antennas are always up mm-hmm. when I see men on these shows. Mm-hmm. Not to say that they all have issues, but I'm typically skeptical of the men on these shows because Uh the first question that comes to my mind is if you're a decent man and you have somewhat of a decent social circle Uh why you not with somebody Uh because i just know surely from the numbers that there are a plethora of decent women like what is pushing you to go to this reality show. Now, there are some extenuating circumstances, right? Like some people are like, I just moved to the area. I don't Mm -hmm. know anybody Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. You know, maybe I'm somewhat famous or maybe I, I've been taken advantage of or people are only trying to use me. So right. I'm going to a show like this to kind of avoid that. Yeah. Sometimes you have that. But yeah. for the most part, guys don't need this. So whenever I see guys on these shows, I'm always like, what's up? What's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's negative for me to say or maybe mm-hmm. that's me passing judgment. But I'm just saying using my deductive reasoning. That's how I go into it. <laughs> So when I seen Tyler in the pods, those two episodes that I did watch, and I thought like, oh, he's so nice, he's so good, like he's saying all the right things, like, you know, and, and a lot of the other guys, I was like, dang, you know, they these seem like a, like a decent batch of guys, like, mm-hmm. you know, what's T? And in the DMV, like, I, I <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter about the nationality because we all know the different art types that we have in this area mm-hmm. whether it be whether it be I, i'ma just not to be insensitive but i'ma just put all of the immigrants in one box that are not from africa mm-hmm. anybody that's 
Indian, Asian, mm-hmm. whatever, all, mm-hmm. all them in one box. We mm-hmm. know how they are. We know how they operate. Mm-hmm. It's a race to get as close to whiteness as possible. Mm-hmm. And that's just what it is mm-hmm. in this area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We know that the ones from Africa, they basically, they, they have probably entertained black women, but for the most part, they also trying to get to that status. Mm-hmm. And for them, it's more so about, I think for them, it's more so about money and status than it is about the type of women that they choose. If they feel like you're somebody that can help them grow and get that status, they'll choose you regardless of your ethnicity. Yep. These black ones, we already know what they about. Unless yep. he, you know, uh, uh, unless he grew up in this area and, or he grew up in a scenario where he was raised to respect the women in his community. A lot of times they don't go for us mm-hmm. or, if, if he's a little bit older, a little bit more mature and yeah. has changed his perspective of it, then he will. Yep. So I'm just saying all of that to say, I can speak on this because I understand the dynamic of the men in the DMV area okay. generally for the most part. Right. So even with that being said, I was watching this thing like, what's wrong with these dudes? Mm-hmm. It's something. Because if y'all were really, truly just out here trying to find love Mm -hmm. and not, there was nothing toxic about you. Mm -hmm. You ain't had no, like you would have it. Somebody would have, you, you, the girls would have ate you up. You wouldn't have time to go on love is blind. Uh So I just always go into it with that mindset. So having all these little scandals and stuff like that coming out about these men, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Tyler having three kids talking about he was a sperm donor and I guess apparently he was a sperm donor, but then ended up having a secret relationship with one of the women in the lesbian couple that he was donating his sperm to. Exactly. I'm not surprised. Like, the other dude, I can't think of the other dude's name, but the other dude that was white but talking about he's like a quarter West African. Girl... But even him like, being really into kink and like, having this kind of, like, and not that I'm kink shaming, but not disclosing his sexual desires, I'm not surprised. All it's of the lot. shit that's going on, yeah. I'm not surprised. Oh, it's sad to say, but I don't really think that you're going to get, majority of the pool of people that you're going to get on these reality dating shows, they're going to have some type of issues because the people that are, that don't have any issues, they don't need that. Mm-hmm. They're they not even going to make it there. I just... So, anyway, that's my philosophy. That's my theory on yeah. this. Sorry to go down that rabbit hole. To circle it back around, the Libras have been Libra good, bad, and indifferent. Big Libra season. Not the little one. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, we've ca- we've caught up on all the things. Pretty much. All the things Kendra and Toy. So, let's get into... So, there's a lot of things that have been happening. Oh, and it's so going to be a quick recap of what we know has happened. Right. But we're not getting into it. Right. We know that the presidential debate was a mess. Oh, God. That was a whole shit show. Donald's, go on. I'm so, but you know what, though? There are some people who really and truly feel like he is the answer. And I just, I I don't know how to, I think somebody said this on TikTok, that, that when he ran against Hillary and everybody was like, People clearly see this craziness. They see what he's saying. Mm-hmm, they see that mm-hmm, she's the better mm-hmm. option. And we had a lot of faith in the American people in which way they would vote. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that we were wrong. And somebody on TikTok well, was saying Well, not technically. That. Because she won the popular vote. It's because of how they have everything redlined. Oh, so it, that's the, electoral votes. It's what really right. messes you up. So she, out, let, let's, she did win the popular vote. So we know she got more Americans who want right, her to be right, president. Right, right. However, they've rigged some things the way that they've rigged them. Go ahead. But even with that being said, it's been like that for years. So we know the game we're playing, Mm -hmm. right? But that's what this creator was saying was just that she feels like, or she feels she was explaining that we're getting back into that comfortable mindset because to some of us, it just makes sense. And I'm not saying that that Kamala is perfect, right? Because I feel like she does have her qualms Mm -hmm. and i'm not a hundred percent sold but if these are my two options i just in my just for me for my conscience i can't align with somebody who is 
very much doesn't speak to any of the things that I value. The thing is, no, there's there's never going to be a politician that's going to speak to everybody. That's true. You not, there's not a perfect politician. There's not, first of all, if you just look at it in your own home, you're not the perfect parent to each of your children. That's so true. Mm -hmm. So if you can't even be that for your own life, we pull these politicians in this high regard that they're going to make everything in our life this way. But when you're in a community, it's about what's the betterment of the community. And exactly. that may not be the betterment for you. But if your next door neighbor can now get food, it might be a little higher for you because you financially can do it, but your next door neighbor now has insurance or has this. And you might be paying a little bit more of a premium and it's an asshole thing. But I would rather that child be able to get free lunch or whatever because that's their only meal of the day. So it's never going to be a perfect system. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like she's also looking out for the American people. And I, I don't I don't like the way the games of politics is played because it's instead of just enriching your own candidate as a society, media, all these other entities that play into it, mm -hmm. it's about putting the other person down. Right. And yeah. I don't like that because yeah. it disintegrates the integrity of what we're trying to do. And I think with her campaign, because a lot of times I've seen on interviews and they ask these questions and she has been pretty diligent in saying, like, it just is what it is. We know who he is and moving past it. But he goes into such, and it's not just mudslinging. You go into a space, you're talking about her intelligence, but you gave her $5,000 for her reelection as attorney general doesn't make sense you used to be a democrat you made it very good he said years ago if i reply if i ran i'm gonna run republican because they stupid so he has shown himself to you to be exactly who he is and it's just like there are things and I, i'm gonna get off my soapbox in a second there's certain things that bother me when it comes to black men when it comes to this situation and it's like well who's talking to us and my biggest thing is we as black women have done our due diligence from having nothing to being trying to get ahead mm -hmm. and being forced to take on these roles where no we don't want to be the masculine person in the household but the masculine person in the household is too busy complaining about how his life is unfair if we did continue in that space we would not be excelling in the way that we are mm -hmm. and so when it's like well, what does he say what are they saying to black well let me ask you a question all these black men keep saying they're not talking to us. What do you want? Right. I've never heard them say, this is what we want. Because if you're saying, well, I don't want to be criminalized, she's trying to do that. Right. If you're saying, hey, I'll be able to get a better job, I can't stop racism, right? But we have done things. The Crown Act is not just for women. It's also for black men. Mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. don't have to have a haircut. That you can be in the military now and have, of course, there are certain things that you have to take it do. But... I ain't seen their man have to shave his face. He, they beard it up. Mm -hmm. So there are some things because you want somebody to say, oh, black man, this is exactly what we're doing for you. It becomes this whole thing. They're not saying, oh, we're going to help women, black women with reproductive. They're like, oh, no, it's hurting white women. So we're just going to do women's right. Black men have been in charge of so many things. Mm -hmm. And it's an unfortunate space where they're not going to say black, white woman. They're just going to generalize it. Well, you're a man, so you're generalized in the men's thing. But under the layers, if you look and pay attention, there are a lot of benefits that you all have been able to have. When they're talking about crime, they're not talking about crime for white men, baby. They're talking about legalizing the marijuana because we know what y'all are doing. We know what you are selling. We know what fast money you want to get. So there are some things that they can't outright say, oh, we're doing it so black men don't go to jail. You think that's going to pass? Absolutely not. Right. So you have to use a cover. We didn't get rights to vote because they wanted black women to be able to vote. We got rights to vote because we're women and mm -hmm. they wanted white women to, women to be able to vote. So stop acting. That, we, we understand there's a cover that people have to use to get things moved forward. Mm -hmm. And using a black woman and using a black man is not going to move things forward. It's just not. And it's unfortunate, but that's the name of the game. And until y'all start really wanting to play the game to win, it's always going to be why I'm taking my ball and going home. And that, regardless of how you look at it, taking your ball and going home ain't going to change nothing. Get into politics. Get into some type of leadership. Figure some shit out. Instead of just always, like, complaining about what was me, why I don't have. I totally agree. So, anyway, I'm off my soapbox. But it just, it, it infuriates me because then I also am around black men who... 
understand that there's there's a time and a place for certain things and Donald Trump don't like y'all. <laughs> White men don't they don't generalizing. They don't fool with y'all. So stop trying to be as close to to them as possible. They want you in the house to be able to take from you and see what you're doing to make the rules so that it can go against you. Mm-hmm. They're not inviting you in the house to make your life better. That's just what it is. So, so, so stop thinking that, oh, because white women will be attracted to you or you can get you, you can pull you one, that all of a sudden you are closer to whiteness. It's, that's just not the case. But Yeah. I, I mean, I don't really think any, any side, right, has the best interest of black people in general. But I do, a lot of people have said this, like, it's a, a lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm. And, and you have some people to say, well, well I don't want to choose either e- evil. All right, fine. But you still got to live here. Yeah. If, and play out of rules. Right. So, or you, or you don't, right? So, so you can choose not to vote. You can choose not to participate. But then when those that are participating get the people in power that they want in power, it's going to have an effect on you. So, and so you making this decision not to participate in that process, it still is going to end up having an effect on you. Right. So it's, to me, it's counterproductive. Like I understand that. You cut like, off your people, nose to spite your face. Cause regardless, yeah. the face is going to have to deal with the consequences exactly. of whatever action. Um, so at least if you put your voice out there to be heard, it's heard. And, and I think a lot of people don't realize, I mean, I didn't even really fully understand the depths of it, but there's more to a presidential election than just the president. There's that's other the, things that's my on biggest that thing. Go, when I say get into leadership, do go into the com- your community, find out who your, your, um, just starting off with your city representative, mm-hmm. who is your mayor, who, like the, what bills are being put forth on the, cause the president don't just come up with, oh, this is what we're doing. There is a, a, a full checks and balances. Do that part. I want to, I want all this outrage to be the same amount of outrage in two years when it's not the presidency, but it's the Senate and it's the Congress and it's your mayors and it's all these other people who have to do the voting for anything to be signed. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 start there. Let's let's talk about like who is your representative? Who is your state representative? If you can't tell me that, don't talk to me about the presidency. That's so true. Yeah. So anyway, so we said we're not gonna deep dive. So we're not deep yeah. dive. So yeah, that's we're that. Not, we don't have to deep dive. Only the one last little thing I will say is the biggest criticism that I have seen Kamala getting is that she flip flops on um, her stance on things, and and people don't like that. But I would just offer up to people. When you learn, when you know better, you do better. So if I at one point in time was like, I don't like bourbon and I never drank it. And then we try this Sir Davis and it's like, oh, it has some different notes. It doesn't taste like any other bourbons. And now I'm saying, well, I could see how I, I can make it work for me. Exactly. So now, I, now I'm flip floppy because, well, you ain't like it last year. Why you right, like it now? Right, it's like, right. Isn't isn't that what we want our politicians to do when we when we are saying, hey, we don't like your stance on something. We don't agree with it. We want you to focus on this issue and look at why, why we should is, be why doing things affecting, differently. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then she comes in and she does that. She assesses it and she's like, OK, it makes sense. I, I and, and ultimately, I work for you. I represent you. So, let so me if do you're right. saying that this is what you want to do, I've researched it. I've looked into it. I'm going to change my stance on it. I just offer that that may not necessarily be flip flopping. It may actually be what we need in a, in a politician politician. to actually do the work to change your stance on something when your constituents are telling you that that's something that's that is important to them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so we have that. Then we had the, um, vice presidential debate. (laughs) Uh, very under, but not, I'm not going to say underwhelming, but I'm gonna tell you what, that damn Vance is slick as oil. He is. Ooh, he is a slithering. Uh, opinion, I yeah. like J.D. Vance. I do. I, I I mean, I'll stand on that. I like J.D. Vance. I, I don't think, I don't agree with everything he says, just like I don't agree with everything anybody says. And I don't agree with his stance on a lot of things, but, but just looking at him as a politician, he understands that, he understands that world. 
He understands I, I, yes, I, how to do that. He uh, And I think that he understands how to present himself as the 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 sociable like he understands how to present himself as the down to earth sociable person that you want him to be but still being able to kind of I don't want to say manipulate but like talk around the issue. I don't like that. I I feel like JD Vance is what Donald Trump politically wants to be. Wants to be. Yeah. I mean I I think that And and I just like my politicians traditional. I, I do. I, listen, I, I like it, them traditional. But the thing is if he was a traditional politician, I can understand that. But the way that he, like, what he's trying to do, in my opinion, is what um, his other one, what's the other one that he had, uh, Pence could not do, mm-hmm. which is possibly have a future in politics yeah. after this. Yeah. It's what he's trying to play to. Right. But the problem is, for me, is there's only so much playing to that where you have to dive more into like he doesn't have to be super radical because donald trump already does that for him right but if he wants those MAGA people there is some more deepening that he'll have to do and the fact that i know that he's willing to do it just to be in the top spot is a problem for me Mm. because being in the top spot but not doing right by everybody like we are have we have to all live in this space and so when is it going to be which i feel like at some point like when uh because like i was like i'll have I'm, I'm going to have a republican in my cabinet because there has to be an opposite side to so you because if you're only focused on one thing someone's saying hey but these people over here need this and if it makes sense it makes sense yeah but there's no making of sense to republicans because it's about control mm. to me and i don't want to be I the le- I don't want anybody trying to control me, especially if I'm the one I'm paying my taxes. I'm doing all of the things. I'm going to work. I'm a good citizen. I should be able to control what belongs to me, i.e. my body, mm-hmm. i.e. my vote, i.e. my cho- like the things that belong to me. You shouldn't have control over what I got going on, especially about reproductives. Yeah, I mean, I think that they would probably argue that, like. Just hearing what you're saying, I think that most conservatives will argue that that's that's their stance is that they would like to see government be less involved, right, from the from the standpoint of control, than more involved. But I think I think everybody is saying the same thing. I just think that our priorities are in the wrong place. Yeah, like, I, yeah. They don't they don't mind putting controls and bans on what we do with our reproductive system, but they don't want nobody to take their guns. That's what I'm saying. So it just doesn't make. And the thing is, no one. And this is the problem, right? And this is what I. And I'm after this, we're going because we're going we're going to end up in 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 the weeds. No one's trying to take your guns. You put restrictions on them, right? Right. So restrictions are saying, okay, yeah, we want to do background checks. Yeah, we want to do this. Why is it that you don't want somebody to do a background check to further to make sure that a the person that's going to get this gun it makes sense. Why do you need a war type gun if you're going out shooting? There are rapid shooting rifles that you can still use, but you don't need the same one that they're using over in Iraq. This is not a war zone, right? So it's it's certain things like, okay, yeah, certain things is a yes and certain things is a no. There are certain things I couldn't just, there are certain places I can't just go to a clinic and be like, this is, everybody's just getting free everything. Right. It don't work like that. There are controls to make things sure that things are put in place being Even with to, abortions there are controls that's, that's what i mean yeah. there are controls on how you do stuff but we we don't just stop at okay you you say let's not do abortions but then you also like okay but we also don't want y'all to have contraceptions yeah and we also so you don't want us to do this one but then if something happens you also don't want us to do this so now you're trying to control okay so that means don't have sex. like you're trying to take this to if you aren't married, because that's the the foundation of it is, if you're not married, you should not be having sex. And so now you're bringing God into a space that God might not be in my life. If someone's an atheist or doesn't believe in that, there should be, that's their business between them and their doctor. If they're going to pay an obscene amount of money to do what they need to do, that's their business and that's what they need to do. If someone has gotten into a situation where there's incest, rape, that's their business. They need to do what they need to do. 
there has not been when when I will not be as upset maybe when they come out with a countermeasure and, and deal with men's reproductives. Right. Let's do that. Let's okay. Everybody got to be circum. I mean, not circumcised. It has to um have a vasectomy, vasectomy until yeah. they are married. And are with their wife for two years. And then they can get a reverse because it's much easier for them. Everything is much easier for them to do. I ain't heard a thing about it. Ain't a, ain't a peep about it. So it's just, but anyway, so that, so we have the second debate. We got the diddle or diddly. Diddle, oh, God. Diddle, diddy with, with, the, with the baby all. Oh, my gosh. That was. Man, damn. Man, did 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 it, did it damn okay yo i was like what in a the th- over a thousand bottles of baby oil what are you doing and then they're gonna say they got baby? it from costco costco said we ain't sell that baby no damn <laughs> thing <laughs> we we don't even got that much don't do us don't you dare <laughs> don't you dare do us like that i feel like I, I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if like Johnson and Johnson were to come out and be like, "We are not whatever." He's that, we been in touch condone, with our distributor. We do not condone any of this. None of it. Jaguar right out here on Pierce Morgan. Oh, that's yes. more, little, more recent. That was crazy. They done did a cease and desist on not not a decent cease and desist, but the Carter's uh, yeah, lawyer came out and was like. I'm gonna need you to take that down, and he said, "And it's down." Yeah. <laughs> um. What? Sh- I'm in shits and gigs. I know. I'm so sad about that. And then Young Philly done got. So I don't think you watch. I know. I, I do. And so what did he, he get done, arrested for? Right. <gasps> in Australia, they 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 extradited him to Australia. Yes, uh, for raping a 20 year old after his show. Yes. I didn't know it was right. Yes, it it's the the thing that right the grape. Yes, the grape. I thought it was like a salt no. or something. Like you know, what I mean, not, no. not that any of it is That's right, right. But, but yes, I didn't no, think it was the grape. Whoa. Yes, and so what else? I'm trying to think of everything. The uh, the Cardi B, the, the Libras of Cal- the Cardi and did. And did. <laughs> and did. And did. And honestly, I'm not mad about it. And mind your business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you out here smashing everybody, every which way, but loose. I want to know, because I know for women, right? I want to know for men, how do regular everyday men get entangled with or approach celebrities? I think they be shooting their shots in them them, them, them DMs. But, like, because I know, like, for girls, like, girls, like, we, we kind of have the stereotype of being groupies. Mm-hmm. So, like, girls are always throwing themselves at celebrities, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. But I just don't understand how that works for a man because I know men, you know, sometimes their egos can be fragile. Mm-hmm. So, like, imagine, like... <clears throat> Like your cousin or something like that. Just a regular Joe. Mm-hmm. Got a regular job. Mm-hmm. He probably make decent money. Maybe he got a, you know what I'm saying? His bills paid. He ain't got that much debt. He just out here just being a regular person. Mm-hmm. Shoots his shot in Cardi B's DMs. Mm-hmm. Then she like, okay, yeah, pull up. Mm-hmm. He gets that opportunity. Like for that man, it's kind of like, is this just like a smash and dash? Or is mm-hmm. this like, oh, I pulled Cardi B? Like, mm-hmm. cause you never, I, I never really hear about like, I know Megan's doing her thing. I know Cardi's doing her thing. I know these girls are doing their thing, but you never really hear any of these dudes coming out being like, yeah, I had that. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the thing. More often than not, dudes are like, if they're going to want to do it again, they know that they, more, most men know their place, right? Mm. They know, like, I don't want to be with somebody this big, knowing that I'm a small fish in this yeah. pond where I know the, who the other that like, I can never compete with those guys, right. right? Women, on the other hand, are like, I can compete. I can get, you know, well, I think because think, your mind I think is like, I can in, cook and I can clean and I can get my body done. But and I, I also can... think we coming from a different perspective of like, he'll elevate me up. Like I gain status by being, you know, 
Offset's girlfriend. Right. I gain status by being whatever. But on the other side, you do, they it doesn't clown work the like shit that. out of you. Yeah. Like why would like for DDG and Haley? That's another um ho- right topic. Holly. Hey, Hallie. 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 Like Sally. Hallie. Yes. Um, and that whole thing, like, why, like, why is Lil Mary with this dusty little yeah. thing, right? Yeah, and so yeah. he, and he has his little coin of his own, but whatever. So I think it's that kind of situation. Like, men don't want to be in the public eye, being like, "Why is she messing with this old?" But the the fact that okay, I'm she gonna slide me some, and then he can also still do him, right? And feel yeah. like he can use her money to finesse. Yeah, I guess. It kind of reminds me of Mary J. Blige and Can Do. Yeah. But. Can't do. Right. That didn't end up well. No. Um, not at all. But yeah, I'm not mad at Cardi B at all. Like, she I'm said, not mad at all. Did. And then for people to be like, oh, she was pregnant. Okay. Was another man, baby, and her. Like. The, every, let me tell you something. Everything is shut down. Nothing is happening. Nothing but, is happening to that baby. But my thing is, even if it was, you got somebody pregnant and you don't mind slanging your seed into other women. So same time, why should I? My, my why do I? Why should I care? Why should it? It's like they have this moral compass that we're supposed to have as women. That's like, how dare you? But yeah, you could just have a baby and then he be like, oh, you just had the baby, it's so great, and then they kiss on you and stuff like that, and then go sleep with his girlfriend because. Now for six weeks you can't give it up. There's no moral compass to say, while my wife is not able to drink or do this or do that, I'm not going to do it. It's like, oh, I'm going out with the boys. I'm still smoking my cigars. I'm still living my life because nothing has changed for you. And you think that because you've gotten pregnant or you've now had a baby that something's supposed to magically change. And say, oh, yeah, now that you're a mom, you have to have a straight moral compass. And dads can still just do whatever because they don't have to carry the baby. Get the fuck on. I think it's so... And pregnancy sex is the best sex, so she probably... I mean, I don't know that much about listen, that, but that's okay. what they be saying. That, listen. That's what they be saying. That's, that's what I know. Oh, okay. Hello? <laughs> it's interesting that that, what, that trend, um, like, I'm just thinking about, like, Hallie and DDG, like, after she had the baby, like, now it's like, Oh, things aren't working out. They're not together. And I'm thinking about Kiki and her, like, her baby daddy. And then, like, Cardi B. It's interesting, this trend of, like, like, after motherhood, what is it? And I know we go through postpartum and all of that, but it just seems like. Because men stop looking at you as you're no longer sexualized to them. Mm. Because now you're a mother. And this is, well, and I think I've seen it either on TikTok or Instagram. And it, it made perfect sense. Because before, you were footloose and fancy free. And then when, it's it's a difference when, like there are some men who see it and it just makes them love you more. And it's other men where it's like, there a lot of times it's jealousy. If they didn't have a good relationship with their mother, you being a better mother or person to this child, it's like, I didn't get that. So that rears its ugly head. Um, and then it's like, you, it's, it's sometimes it's the same thing when, like, it's like, it's not always the same, but like when you're the girlfriend, you know, sometimes they'll be, they're willing to do more experimental things sexually mm-hmm, and things mm-hmm, like that. When you become the wife, it's kind of, I don't want to do this. It mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. dials itself back. Now you said my mom and it's like, he was just on your boob and mm-hmm. now I don't want to. So then it's kind of like, I don't want to do that. You're putting a stigma on the things that you used to love about me. Oh, but you breastfeed now. And I know if I do that, it's milk in there. It just becomes a little... Now, there's men that be like, and I like that, though. So, you got your different ones. And that ends up happening, ends up where you become such a mom, right? Because for women, you think of, you have to think about everything. And the men that don't have to do those things, Mm -hmm. they're trying to understand why you can't still be the same person. But you can't be because your mind is different. Like, your concerns out for your children outweigh. Um, especially as a baby, outweigh the man's concerns or your concern for him in the same way. Mm-hmm. The mothering part comes back in. Like, right? so you like, oh, baby got the doctor's appointment to stand up. Oh, baby, did you go to the dentist? So your range of what you were used to changes because I didn't have to wash your clothes, but I got to wash the baby's clothes. I mean, wash everybody's clothes. Oh, I need to go to the grocery store. We just can't go out to eat. Now we got to go get pampers and we have to do this. And so it was like, you used to be, hey, babe, let's just go to dinner. And it's not that anymore. And it's yeah. like, oh, we, so it just, 
the dynamics change and what happens a lot of times men don't continue to date those women mm. to get to learn them as now mothers and allowing that mother to realize oh shoot i'm because you quickly fall into that i'm a mom role and don't get out of it and then realize i haven't had a life mm. and so now you've become a different person but it's all it's i think being in a relationship it is that man's responsibility but like, hey we found a babysitter it's connection time, me and you time, without the baby, that kind of thing. And women have to be accepting of it, and men have to be a little bit forceful to say, hey, this is what I need from you. And they won't do that either. Because like, you feel guilty, like, I shouldn't tell her I don't want her to have a baby, or we shouldn't do this, or we should do that. And it's like, nah, talk, talk to me, so that I can know which also what you need. Because you do fall into that, I'm a mom bro. Interesting. So you have that. Um, you got Kendrick Lamar doing a solo and it's a whole thing like, he should have had Lil Wayne and I'm just like he was big last year everybody in the world was like, like us I'm like ah oh. I'm excited about that honestly I think it'll be a show and then uh, the rap girlies are girlying mm. I love me a good girl it's glowed up okay. you hear me go glow go I love glow, glow. She said, yeah glow <laughs> and I looked at, uh, I was watching Megan Thee Stallion's workout because she does slim down. She looks so good. Mm -hmm. Who else does slim down look Ooh. good? Lizzo. Have you seen Lizzo? I haven't seen her lately. When I say that chin is snatched, really? I, Lizzo looks good. Let me see. Girl, Lizzo looks so good. Oh, God. I love Lizzo. I know she had a little stuff, but she done, she looks so much better. I'm not going to say better, but she, you could tell. Oh, here you go. Let me see if it'll pop up. Lizzo is sharing more insight into her weight loss journey on October. You see that face? Mm -hmm. Compared to they look good. I hate the stair master, y'all. They say it's the bee's knees, but you know what I saw? And that's why I knew she was losing that weight, child. She did something. I saw that clavicle. I said, welcome to the class. Come. I see the class trying to come on through. I love a good clavicle. When the class comes through, that's how you know. So Lizzo losing weight and looking good. I'm trying to... We lost... Um, Several people. The father from Good Times. That's a whole... Man, his daughter didn't find out that he had passed until the rest of us found out. That was in early, late September. He passed in August. The brother didn't tell her. I read something where he was saying how he didn't want no, he had said in his will he didn't want it to be Be disclosed. publicized. But that's his daughter. Well, they must be estranged. So, the, no, the daughter and him weren't estranged. The brother and the daughter, because she, she had lawsuits saying that she felt like he was taking advantage of mm. the dad and his money and stuff like that. Um, we lost somebody else, I can't remember. Quite a few people. Yeah. James Earl Jones. Yes. Mufasa. No, they said that he passed away. Oh, Shannon Doherty. Who are you? Th that's not who you were thinking about, though. No. Uh, oh, thank Frankie Beverly. Frankie Bev. Yes. Uh, that's right. So, cherish the ones you love. Quite a few people passed, which was weird because it was getting to the point where it was every time. Oh yes, Sissy Houston. Sissy Houston. That was away. recently this week. So, oh, James Amos. That's who it was. Oh wow! How old was he? He wasn't super old. I think he was like 80-something. I guess because when he was on Good Times, he looked so old mm -hmm. that I just assumed. Not to say like he looked old, but he was playing their dad, so I just assumed. All of them was young because even what's the fact, Hemsley, he looked, he was only like 30-something. Oh, really? Chairman Hemsley, when he was playing that. He was 84, super young. So that, I think that's all I have for the deep dive. Not deep dive, but things that we've been... That we miss that, that, we that miss. happened since we've been gone. I, I think please send your prayers to all the people that's dealing in Florida, oh, yeah. Georgia. My in law asks, they are in Augusta, and Augusta got hit really hard. They didn't have power until August, October the 5th. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, what did they do? Did they just sit in the house with no power? They went to a shelter? What they so, do? there were some places that had a sh um, had power. So, like, her kids went to the father's aunt's house or the father's cousin's house. So they had power. So the, her, my, my nephews went there. But um, his sister, brother, and mother could stay at the house. I think the last two days that they didn't have power, they went to her sister's house, so his aunt's house. His brother and oldest 
and his brother and mother went there, but the older one, she just stayed home. Mm. And they wasn't working because like, the power wasn't on at the job. They didn't go to they He wasn't going to school. It was it was bad. So glad that the power was back on. Didn't hit as high up, but now people are dealing with all the people that's in Florida going through it again after uh, Milton. So prayers up to them. Please, Nem Nem and Yahoo, we don't need another war. Sit your ass down oh, and do a gosh. damn ceasefire because you're getting on my nerve. Yeah, Trump I, sending I, all the COVID stuff to, to Putin. What the hell was that about? I don't know. I didn't hear about that. I see oh, during COVID, he sent him a bunch of stuff for personal use. Not even for Russia, personal use. Just a mess. I didn't hear about that. Yes. That that was a this week thing. So, a mess. He needs to, he needs to sit down. So, those are LeBron and Ron, Ronnie played together yeah. here recently. Mm -hmm. The Raskins is doing something. I saw that. I saw him. I wasn't going to speak on it, but apparently they got a team this year. Hello? Come on now. <laughs> team it up. My dad keeps saying they're a young team that they just let them play and let them get to know each other instead of like, trading each other. It's like trading them out. Just get, give them an opportunity. But they, they showing up. Let's it's all see. okay. Hello. Time will tell. I feel like they do this every year with the Redskins. They'd be so excited at the beginning of the year. And then it goes, yeah. Well, no, I honestly think I, I agree with your dad. If they just let the team scale, they'll be fine. But I feel like there is so much insider, like, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Oh, we got a deal over here. Yeah. It's like, it's just, just let, them, let them play, as they say. But that's it. Oh, happy, happy anniversary. Oh, my, my anniversary is this weekend, so we'll be celebrating that. Yep. Well, okay. last weekend. So By Monday. I see this, it'll be last weekend. Oh, um, happy anniversary. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. That's all I got. And then, because at the end of the day, gonna end. <laughs> we missed y'all, y'all. We just did a recap. We did miss y'all. I think so. Th some of the, these are some of the things I'm thinking about moving into next year. I think we're going to start having some special guests. Uh, for sure. I Definitely think that um, I want to start doing because we do go out, but we never like, record like, or record. take pictures and I stuff like you that. You have to do that because I I damn near don't take pictures at all. I know. I'd be so in the, I've, as I've gotten older, I'd just be so in the moment. Yeah. I don't really believe we have having time for that. But I think we want to start trying to add some spice to our page and get, get some, get y'all some, yeah. some, some more content. I also us. wonder if once a week of episodes, I feel like it's a good kind of pace, mm -hmm. but I wonder if it's sustainable. Because the thing is, we be living life and I think that. It's just, we don't, like, we're doing everything. Mm -hmm. I think if we weren't doing everything, like, a lot of other podcasts, people aren't working, so that's their, this this is their job, mm -hmm. and we're still trying to build everything up, so it's just a little different. Um, sometimes it can be taxing on the schedule, mm -hmm. and we don't want to just do Zoom, because you don't get the same yeah, vibes. Yeah. There are some podcasts that just flow off of, like, a Zoom, but like, I think for me, I would want to figure out how we can do a better Zoom. Cause we did listen, y'all. It's just us. It's listen. We are the crew, the sound, we the mics. That's the sound. The camera. <laughs> so we the like, editors. Trying to figure things out, and people are like, oh, there's so many apps you can use, and I'm sure there is. But then I still got to spend, or Kendra has to spend like 20, 30 minutes going on YouTube, figuring out how to use this app, and then learning researching all the it. And we still have. Yeah. She is a wife. She is a, a mom. She is a sister. She is a busy body. I am a girl. Friend, <laughs> don't do that. I am a partner. Yes, I am a, I am a mother. I have a job. I have a lot of things going on, as we all do, and so we are trying to give you an insight on like just our conversations, the things that we like to do, and the th like things that are going on. Just our purview, because I think some of our stuff that we talk about is a little different than what you have on a regular mm -hmm. schmegula. So anyway, but with that being said, this was another great episode. Welcome back episode, Sir Davis episode. We in here. here episode. So with that being said, we'll drink to that. Have a wonderful rest of the week.